Hello everyone and welcome back to Master Detective Archives Rain Code. Boy, I sure do hope you didn't miss last episode, because if you're just like tuning in now and don't know what's happening already, you're gonna be mighty confused. Uh <laughs> so um last time we infiltrated Etheria? Academy, I think? Uh, after meeting Kurumi, uh, over there. And, uh, we employed Desuhiko to help us get in there. Not in debt this time. Uh, and so, to my surprise, honestly, yeah, to my surprise, man was, man's ended up trying to wing man for us instead of being like, oh, oh, how, how, how can you get women, but I can't? And you know what? I respect that, actually, Desuhiko. I respect that, that, that you're like, hey, 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 Yuma, I'm setting you up with this little lady right here. Granted, you know... I don't, I don't think... Well, actually, this could last. I, I did take a look at the box. It is actually Kurumi who's on, like, the top, which ne doesn't necessarily mean anything, considering that... You know, everyone on the train is also on the box, but, you know, she is. She's also crying, which... Oh dear. <laughs> that doesn't bode well. Um, oh yeah, we're cross-dressing, by the way, and there's a dead body right there. Might also be good to know. Uh, Shinigami's also throwing a temper tantrum, because, I don't know. We're not holding hands with her, I guess. <laughs> Um, I will say, it would be a nice touch if that, like, that right there is kind of planned, that she just refuses to look at Kurumi. That'd be pretty cool. Still, like, okay, look, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. It can be funny with this kind of thing, but, like, I don't know. It, it, it's just, like, at the moment, it's just, like, incredibly petty. That Shinigami is jealous of Kurumi being close with Yuma. You know? It's it's incredibly petty. It's not really that funny. And shit, god damn it, Shinigami, I wanna love you. Cause you are charismatic sometimes. But god damn it. Anyway, let's not faff around too much. Oh no, that Oh, it absolutely is. Oh, okay, that that is a nice touch, but still. Let's um Let's get investigating. With my awkward run. All right. We're sorry. I, I just went quiet there. We're also joined by my cat today. Um, he's he's sitting on the the table and he's just staring at me right now. Um. Yeah, I actually he'll probably leave. But if you hear any rustling or some bumps and I have to cut something out, it's his fault. <laughs> Investigation time! Woohoo! Um, I'm not sure if it will help, but can I tell you what I saw? Guys, yeah, could be big, Kurumi. What do you got? Yes, please. During the performance, I was doing odd jobs in the wings. Aside from the theater club members, there wasn't anyone wandering about like an outsider. I mean, other than when Desuhiko jumped in right at the beginning of the play. Yeah, okay, look, we don't... We don't talk about that part. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Well, that's part of the investigation, right? You can't see everyone from the stage, after all. Isn't that why he went up there? So he could memorize all the faces that were there? Kurumi. I'm gonna keep it a buck. You're giving him way too much credit. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, gi I'm giving Desuhiko a little bit of leeway in my own way, but you're giving him way too much credit. Also, there was like no one in the audience. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. We, we forgot to add them in. <laughs> right. I think he just wanted attention. But setting that aside, since she didn't see any outsiders, the only persons of interest are those within the theater club. Yeah, uh, fuck. I don't remember these people's names yet. Okay. 
Okay, so the one that I couldn't remember last time, Anatoly. I think it's Warana. I know it's Wa, because even, like, I didn't say anything, but, like, I immediately thought, like, Waluigi! <laughs> you know, I, I can't lie to you. Um, I don't re I remember what the other two look like. One of them looks like a, just a generic NPC, the other's got, like, the emo, um, bang over one eye with, like, the, the, the bow or something in their hair. When I mean, her hair. Um, we saw generic wandering around, and there was, of course, a point where the lights went out, which, uh, Emo Bangs was in charge of the lights, so, you know, we, we, okay, so, like, obviously there's something that immediately points either way there, um, you know, we saw one of them wandering around, or sneaking around, that's a bit suspicious, uh, lights went out, so something could have happened when the lights were out, so that makes them suspicious. Um, Warana is, like, the least suspicious at the moment, which also makes her suspicious. Especially because there's only three suspects at the moment, and we might not be getting any more? Again, like me, I, I, I said this last time, I could see maybe at some point they try and spin it that, uh, Kurumi's the culprit. I don't think she's gonna be. Again, I, as I said, it really wouldn't make any sense. She does have motive of course, uh, because she suspects all these people, but it wouldn't really have made sense for her to get Yuma involved if, you know, if she was the culprit. Because this, mind you, yeah, I've got to keep this in mind, this is also a double murder we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve the uh, Aiko, I think, six months ago death, and uh, Karen's. I'll keep that in mind while taking a look around done a few investigations already. I should be able to handle this now. Yet you were hopelessly reliant on yours truly until now. I see it's not your brain making the decisions anymore. <sighs> Look, if you want to talk about relying on people, realistically I relied way more on Harlera than I did you, alright? Can't deny that I did do a little bit of reliance though, but I still figured everything out for myself in the end. Well, almost everything I get, you know. I did have a little bit of help. But th the only thing you did last case was get the thing wrong about throwing the key in. What are you talking about, Shinigami? <sighs> the eyes are wide open from agony. The body is completely motionless. I can immediately tell she's dead. Though she displayed many expressions while acting, her face is frozen in death in the end. This isn't an act. She was struck by an abrupt and unscripted death. Um, was it poison? I mean, you'd have to assume, right? Considering that she uh, consumed something and then went. Bleh. Honestly, I didn't buy it at first. Like, it looked so overacted that I, I didn't buy it. And then. Ugh. Yikes. That's most likely the case. There are no external injuries, and given the circumstances, she must have ingested poison. This will be tough to solve if that's the case. I know nothing about poison. Oh, Ezra just got hit by something, right? Presumably in the script, um, Natasha is always supposed to die. You know, like, how would you act out the play if it didn't, so... Not that you'd know, quote-unquote, what cup the poison is in, in, like, the, the stage way. But, like, one cup would always end up on one side, you know, in, in theory. So you should always know what... Well, no, because then that doesn't really make sense. If you know what cup's gonna get poisoned, right? See, this is where the staging would be important for, like, a case like this. Because they were covering where the cups go, like, this, this actually kind of doesn't matter, but if we could see, like, what cup the poison was poured into, but the characters didn't, then it'd be like, uh, the, whoever was a, a stagehand could very easily plant this to kill Karin. But, since it could be random, since they're not, like, showing anyone, 
the plot could have not been to kill Karin at all, and it's just that one cup accidentally ended up on the wrong side, and it was actually for Warrena. Again, like, I can't really say for sure on this one, because, like, I, I guess we don't know the script. I don't necessarily know if, uh, if a certain cup was supposed to always end up on one side, like, they do a, a, a set routine for sw swapping the glasses or not. Like, that could matter. Because if not, then it's like, yeah, we're just gonna kill someone here, and it's like, shit, alright. Okay. But, you know, otherwise, eh. What? A detective who doesn't know his poisons? Don't tell me you're a poison virgin! Amnesia. Need I say more? Ew, gross! Well, you perverted little detective. Get on your knees and apologize, and maybe I'll teach you a thing or two. How about something like, I'm sorry, I should know my place, I can't live without you, Shinigami! If she was murdered with poison while on stage, <laughs> the poison must have been prepared somewhere else. See, I mean, Yuma's always kind of done this. He kind of just ignores Shinigami half the time. And I'll, I'll say this. O also, it's something that I quite like about the dynamic here. Shinigami is broadly ignored in serious situations. Like, it's only during, like, the... quieter, I guess, like, calmer scenes where Yuma hits her with the... What are you doing? You know? But it, it, it's a very Danganronpa thing, right? Where it's... It's borderline the, <laughs> well, that was weird kind of thing, but yeah, you know, not quite as egregious, but I appreciate the humor kind of just ignores her and just gets on with it. It, it makes her, her seem more like purposely annoying, which, I mean, I don't really find Shinigami annoying, but you know, I, I think it does help that she is clearly, like, purposely supposed to be a little irksome, at least. At least at this point. I need to look for that while checking out anywhere else that seems suspicious. Hey, don't ignore me, you jerk! Okay, yep, well, it's a corpse. Thanks for the confirmation, Shinigami. We always know, we, we check the corpse last, so... Not only is Aiko gone... It is Aiko. Caught in too. Also, I have to say, I didn't say this last episode, but I obviously noticed it there. I can't believe Kurumi, like, correctly pronounces all of the names. So like, yeah, there's, there's like a 50-50 here. I, I, I've noticed that a lot of the main characters pronounce the Japanese names correctly, whereas like the, the background ones obviously didn't have that important of direction. I was just like... Kurumi? Y yeah. Could this also be a fight for the lead role? If so, those most suspicious are Karin's rivals. Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane. Okay, Yoshiko and Kurane. Is the culprit yeah. one of those three? Sorry, Yoshiko. Which I believe is what... Yeah, again. Kurumi correctly using the name there. But I'm really bad at, like, um... Yoshiko sort of name, Yoshiko sort of names. Like, I, I can't not enunciate the I. So, I guess if you don't know, I think I've, maybe I've brought this up in the series, I think I have, but if you don't know, g general rule of thumb, and this is like the only Japanese language rule that I know, with names you enunciate the first syllable, or like, you don't enunciate, or you enunciate the whole thing. You put stress on the first syllable, uh, and that's it, right? Uh, so, for Danganronpa fans, you know how Shuichi, like, yells the first, like, syllable of everyone's names? Kaito! Maki! That, that sort of stuff? That's actually kinda how you're supposed to say those names. Going on without shouting, but it's like... You know. Th th that's kinda how you're supposed to say it, like... Uh... What's an example? Actually, Kurumi or Kirumi. Let's let's start with V3. Kirumi. Good example of this. It's Kirumi. Because you enunciate the not enunciate, you stress the first syllable. Kirumi is more the how you'd say it in if it were an English name, right? That sort of thing. 
and Kurumi's voice actress is getting it right, is, is what I'm saying. Hmm. I need to find out if there was anything suspicious about them during the performance. Kurumi was in the wings the whole time, so perhaps she knows something about the others. See, like, uh, Lucian Dodge, Yuma's voice actor. Uh, he doesn't go on. Like, this isn't a problem, by the way. I'm not actually, like, knocking this. I'm just saying it's kind of intra. This is more from, like, a director's point of view. I don't really know why they don't just go one route, you know? Because, like, one person would just randomly have, like, this great pronunciation. Everyone else would just stick with, like, uh, 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 an anglicized version of the name. It's like, why is it not consistent? It's not bad. It's not, like, a problem. It's just something that I've noticed. It's kind of weird, but... Well, I mean, we've got to go through all of them, but... Start at the top. Before the incident occurred, do you know where Yoshiko was and what she was doing? I didn't see Yoshiko in the wings. She may have been watching from the audience. Oh, right. Speaking of which... Sora sneaked by. During the performance, I noticed Yoshiko walking down the aisle. I thought she was coming back from the restroom. But I didn't see her take her seat. What if she wasn't part of the audience? Where could she have been? Mm, okay, so this is just gonna pick up this sort of stuff. Kurumi, did you notice anything suspicious about Warana while you were watching from the wings? Hmm. As far as I can tell, Warana was just her usual self. She was listening to music right up to the start of the play. I think that's how she concentrates. Did she go near the glasses or bottle before the performance? I wasn't watching her the entire time, but if she did go near the set, I think I would have noticed. Hmm, I see. You cry. Warana was the closest to the victim. That's ample opportunity to commit the crime. But still, how did she add the poison? It couldn't have been during the performance, right? Ah, well, this is a, I, I just thought of this as well. This is another way the, the not showing the audience what's happening uh, could help the crime. Tending, if Warren had just, like, had it on her person, right? I think that would be very difficult. That'd be a fucking... That would be a risky play to make as well. Because if you're searched at all, you, you're done. If you, like, accidentally drop... Because, like, her costume did not have pockets. If she drops that at all, dunzo. Like, the only place... Not, not to be weird about it. The only place to store that is if she, like, puts it in her bra or something, right? Yeah, fucking Miu style, you know? But... Like, uh, otherwise, there is very real possibility that just, like, slips out of her costume. You know? Probably not a great move, but it could be how it went down. Wait, now that I think about it, right after the lights went dark in that one scene, she went near the shelf to pick up a plate. Her back was toward the audience, so I couldn't see her hands. But she only had two or three seconds max. Could she have poured hidden poison in the glass in that time? Did she have any other opportunities after? The next time she touched the glasses was during the shuffling scene. But it was Cotton who moved the glasses in the bottle. She also prepared the poison vial. Well, uh, Warren, I did move them as well. And Stop plus, shuffling, after but... shuffling, Cotton was the one who chose the first glass. Given the situation, it'd be difficult for Warna to poison Cotton specifically. Yeah, that that was kind of uh, that that was the thing that I kind of stumbled on a second ago. Hey, Kurane. What about Kurane? Did she seem strange before the incident occurred? And then, like that—that that was pretty good pronunciation. I feel like uh, maybe not a lot of the time, but. Uh, Karane would probably be more of a thing. Kind of like uh, in Danganronpa, it's Akane, not Akane, like it should be. It's Makoto, not Makoto. You know, again, th these things don't matter, but like it plays on. I, I think about it sometimes, you know. Sometimes I just I wake up in the middle of the night and I think about the pronunciation. And I'm like, do they know? 
<laughs> no, 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 again, like, doesn't matter. Like, I, I, I don't really care. It's just, the only time I, well, again, it's not even like care, but it's the only time that I really pay attention to it is when it's inconsistent. Like, Persona 5 has some of the strangest pronunciations for names that I've ever heard. But, like, it's consistent all the way through. Usually last names, to be fair. But. Hey. Not, not my problem. Hmm. I haven't seen Kurane. She was working up above the whole time. Above? Oh, she was managing the lights then. There's a catwalk above to adjust the lights, and that's where Kurane was supposed to be. So I didn't see her in the wings. There's another girl handling the lights, so it would be helpful to speak to her. Well, I mean, in its own way, this is kind of an alibi, right? Again, like, I'm sure we're about to bring it up, the lights did go out at some point, but if she wasn't running around, then that, that is a pretty good alibi for her just being in place the whole time. And Karin. So I have a funny feeling that we might also get into with Karin that she herself is not technically clear of all this. If we go for the whole, well, you couldn't target anyone specifically. So what if she targeted Waruna but accidentally drank the poison by mistake? You know, good old Hunger Games simulator style. <laughs> Before the performance, did you notice anything off about Karin? Well... I think she was more on edge than usual. She yelled at underclassmen who were late in preparing for the show. She also paced around restlessly. That's not just today. She's been that way since Echo's death. Maybe the whole battle for the lead role had stressed her out. But since she was murdered after Echo, she should be considered another victim, right? True, but that doesn't necessarily mean she's not the culprit in the first one, right? Like, yeah, you, you could very much... Well, see, here's the thing as well, right? You could potentially see that as her already panicking and like a... Oh shit, well, someone was willing to kill her. I've now basically taken her place, am I gonna be fucking next? As it turns out, yes. Um, but there, there's no evidence of that, so... If she knew someone was out to get her... And it's not strange for her to be mentally unstable. True. That, that, that's kind of what I was getting at. Oh, you know, I know I said this last time. I'm already so much more engaged in this one already. Just, I don't know. I feel like just giving them names already, like, makes me a little more interested. But, like, oh, man, I don't know. Like, the setup for this la for this one in the last episode of the play. Oh, oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. The ones fighting for the lead role are Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane. None of them seem particularly suspicious so far. Yeah, like, Yoshiko is, like, the only one who's even vaguely suspicious at the moment. Hey, how long are you gonna keep this up? I'm so over playing 20 questions with this ugly chick. That reminds me, the lights went dark during the performance, right? Mm -hmm. The entire hall was blacked out. Wouldn't it be possible for someone to sneak up on stage and place the poison then? I mean, in pitch black, it'd be pretty hard, but uh, technically possible. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, but I don't think it's possible. Why not? The blackout lasted for only five seconds. We measure it each time to ensure there are no mistakes. So someone would have to move through the dark, get on stage, apply the poison, and get away, all in five seconds. But the important thing to note is that it was planned. Which it should be, you know, it's a play, they, they have blackouts. Usually for scene transitions, but that is important to note, that it was planned. That sounds impossible to me. If they were in a hurry, their footsteps would have been heard by everyone too. True. From the audience it may be impossible, but what about from the wings? No, there were multiple club members, including me, in the wings at all times. While the lights are out, we are always on standby to support the actors. And I guess, I guess maybe here you could go with something from either the people on stage or uh, Kurane. You could like, I, this would be far-fetched, but like lower something from the top down, maybe. But. If someone went on stage, the other members and I would have noticed. 
I guess it's not possible then. <laughs> Even an amateur has more logic than you. I guess you're useless without a certain someone. <clears throat> Oh, wow, wait, we've already technically checked the, the corpse? Oh. Well, um... You know, I, ju I just did have another thought of, like, Karin being the killer. You know what I said last time? Or last episode about, oh, well, we're gonna kill some kids! Thanks to, uh, Shinigami. And then I kind of, like, doubted that for a moment. Like, the only way they'd get around that if was if Karin was the, the one who, who killed it. Like... Who was planning to kill and had already killed Aiko, right? That's, that's the only way to really get around that. So, if only for that reason, I don't think Karin's off the table. Also, the fact that we purposely brought up the whole... Well, she's a victim, right? That, that, that also shifts a little bit of my attention onto her, but... We'll ignore that. We'll ignore that for now. There are two glasses on the table. The props used for the Duel of Poison's Cups. Is that blood in both of them? I think this glass was supposed to be stored upside down on the shelf in the back. True, actually. Yeah, they're upside down. So you probably wouldn't be able to pour anything in beforehand. Cotton was the victim, but she's also the one who set it on the table. Maybe poison was already applied to the glass beforehand. Hey, do you know who prepared these glasses? Yeah, it would have to be done far beforehand. Oh, it's the girls on prop duty. The freshmen are handling them this time. Do you know where this glass was before it was placed on stage? Props are kept in the theater club storage. This glass should have been in there too. The theater club storage? In that case, any club member would have access. Yeah. Um, was real poison applied to the glass? I just thought it could be possible. But there's the risk of being caught by applying the poison after it was moved to the set. If poison was applied, it would have been before being brought to the set. But on days like this, when there's an open rehearsal, props are brought out of storage right after school. The glass should have stayed on that shelf the whole time. After school... Which means it'd be even harder to apply poison before then. Okay, so probably not in the glass, yes. then. At the very least, the props in the set were fully prepared at least one hour before the performance. Okay. There's a wine bottle on the table. Karin poured the liquid from this bottle and started to suffer after drinking it. Then that means there's a chance the poison was mixed into this bottle. Yeah, probably not, though, because Warren also drank it. This isn't wine in here, right? Of course not. It's just grape juice. I poured out the bottle and replaced what was inside. Huh? You, Kurumi? After class, I was asked to help out before I went to get you. I'm still a theater club member, after all. Were both the wine and grape juice sealed before you swapped them out? Yes. I received the unopened wine bottle from a club member. I uncorked the bottle and poured the wine down the sink. It's a waste. What a waste of wine, I was gonna say. After that, I went to the cafeteria and bought a can of grape juice. Of course, this was also unopened. I guess anything for authenticity, I suppose, but what a waste of wine. I poured the juice into the bottle, then put the cork back. I passed the bottle to a club member, and my job was done. Granted, I myself am not the greatest of wine lovers, you know, I'm not a... 45-year-old mother, but... <laughs> but, uh, you know, still, what a waste. That bottle was then placed with the glasses on the shelf before the performance. I see. With so many people around, poison couldn't be added to the bottle after it was placed on stage. If poison was mixed in, it'd be before it was brought on stage. And the poison vial. This vial is supposed to have poison in it, according to the script. But it's empty now. It's dry and shows no signs of ever being wet. Oh, okay. 
interesting. To be sure, the poison in this file wasn't real, and it was just another prop, right? Absolutely. It was always empty. Yeah, and it still seems to have been. Okay. That... That makes things a little more complicated. The contents spill easily because of the loose lid, so we don't even keep colored water in it. That's fair from a, a, a prop standpoint. And it also makes sense because, like, the, you, you'd be able to tell, right, if you poured the liquid into the wine, because it would be, you know, there'd, there'd be different volumes in the in the glasses. Thadden just pretended to pour poison from the vial into the glass on stage. Then it's hard to imagine there being any poison inside it. Yeah, and that makes how the poison actually got in there a pretty difficult question to answer. Or in the, the glasses, anyway. Okay. So, what's left for us to look at here? Uh, can't immediately see anything. Can we get into the wings? Oh, yeah, we can. Okay. Good. She mentioned that the catwalk for adjusting the lights is up above. Are those the stairs to reach them? Would you like to go check up there? Yeah, I would. The spotlights for the stage are set over there. It's a lot narrower than I thought. Yeah, uh, the catwalks above stages usually are. It's pretty high up. Yeah. It'd be hard on anyone with the fear of heights. Yeah, well, <laughs> how is it? Funny thing about that being brought up two cases in a row, huh? So you can move the lights as needed for the play. The table is directly below, which means... Yeah, you think what I was thinking, eh, Yuma? You can't see the glasses getting shuffled from the audience seats, but they could have been visible from up here. I could find out for sure if I could talk to someone that was up here. Go right, eh? Or just a generic. There's no okay. point in going that way. Oh, yeah, it says you, Shinigami. I mean, just because you were right this one time. My place is among the gentry, so these don't suit my palate. These donuts? It's not a great donut lover. Okay, uh, don't donuts with holes in them. They I just don't, don't do anything, anything for me. On this side. There's nothing anywhere, apparently, Shinigami. Jeez. There's a script on the floor. That's a script of the play. Someone must have dropped it in all the chaos. The script describes the duel of poisoned cup scene. Okay, this is important. We need the to know how this is supposed Natasha, to go down. Played by Cotton, is supposed to take the wine and glasses from a shelf. Okay, which she did. After that, the glasses are shuffled on stage. According to the script, Anatoly shuffles glasses. Note: Make sure the audiences cannot the audience cannot see the glasses. Ah, <sighs> oh, staging. Anatoly. Finished. Natasha, it is my turn then. Natasha also shuffles in a similar way. Natasha, I am ready. Anatoly and Natasha stand on the on the opposite sides of the table, facing one another. After that, Cotton takes the first glass, and they both drink at the same time. Unfortunately, Cotton's glass turned out to actually be poisoned. Kurumi, I was wondering about this script. It says, make sure the audience cannot see the glasses. Why is that? Yeah, go on. Uh, tell me, because that, that's bad staging if it's uh, unintentional. Well, not unintentional, but, but, you know, if there's no good purpose behind it. It's to make the result feel unpredictable to the audience. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I mean, again, like, it's something that does not work at all if you're familiar with the source material, but I appreciate that most people aren't, so it's fine, it's whatever. That's that's just a drama student POV. If the glasses are visible, no matter how fast they are shuffled, the audience can see which one has the poison. The script doesn't say anything about how many times to shuffle the glasses, or which one will have the poison in it. Hmm, so there's no... Right, well, because they don't actually put anything in there, right? Because the, the, the poison vial is empty. 
So it's just, it, it's a pre-planned conclusion, but the shuffling doesn't really matter. The shuffling's for show. Exactly. There's no poison to begin with, so it doesn't matter which one's picked. You just pick any glass and act out your death after drinking. In the script, Hodden was to die. But I didn't think she'd actually die. I see. Since the instructions aren't precise, both actresses don't know the results from shuffling either. Okay. Okay, that, that, that's important to grab. Hmm. Maybe that's all the investigating I can do. Oh, sweet. Okay. Finished! Well, got Mario I think Party I've minigame. checked all that I can for now. I have a good idea of how things work around here. It seems certain Cotton died from drinking poison, but I couldn't find any clues that point to how it was done. Oh, stuck already, Mr. Pervert Detective? If you need my adorable angel's whisper to help, maybe you should get on your knees and beg. Uh, it's more of a devil's whisper. What angel? You're a death god. <sighs> I shouldn't even pay attention to her. But she's right. I'm stuck. What should I do? Well, we need to talk to our uh, other suspects. Yuma, if you're done with the crime scene investigation, are you conducting the questioning next? And since this was originally for Aiko, we do need to go check out her crime scene too. Questioning? Aren't you going to talk to Yoshiko, Waruna, Kurane, and the others? Oh yeah, I guess I haven't really done that before though, have I? In the first case, literally everyone was dead, and last time... Well, they were all nameless NPCs that I only really talked to once. Oh. Oh! Right! Let's go and talk to them. <laughs> oh. She's such a loudmouth. Actually, hold on. Let me, let me see how... Is the auto good in this game? But... How do we talk to them? Does it have an awkward pause? I doubt they'll be too willing to share anything with me. I joined the club only recently, so they don't trust me. And you're a complete outsider, Yuma. Even though you're It does have a bit of a pause, I'll just keep though. on pressing the button then. That's it! A disguise! Maybe this could work if we use Desuhiko's disguise. He could disguise as any of the girls and start questioning them. Could do. Oh. Oh, hello. Uh, the peacekeepers? Oh, oh this, this is awkward. Already. That woman, she was the one with that Yomi die. I wonder if she'll recognize me. I am the Amaterasu Peacekeepers Vice Director. The trusted right hand, showered with love by Director Yomi himself. Yeah, don't, don't, don't bring that up, please. Martina Electra. Goodness me, you've surely done something reckless this time around. This time around? Oh, maybe she does recognize looks us. Looks like she found out you snuck into a girl's school. Yep. I think this deserves the death penalty, don't you? Um, there's a reason why I'm dressed this way. What are you doing? Hurry up and make the arrest. Wait, I can explain! Uh, this is really bad. We can't just, like, go right into the mystery labyrinth yet. Oh no, I, I see what we're doing. Ah, uh, I, I see. She is going to be the number one suspect that we're defending. Ah, uh, it makes sense. You have no right to remain silent. You have no right to talk to a lawyer either. You only possess two rights. Confess the truth and beg Amaterasu Corporation for mercy. Are there even lawyers in Kano Ward? I feel like there's no need for them. Take her away. Um, please, wait! Are you sure you want to try and stop Amaterasu Peacekeeper, Vice Director Martina? Yes. Yeah, tell me, why are you taking Kurumi? To arrest her, naturally. On the suspicion of murdering Kare. I mean, again, like, she has motive, right? Because of her suspicions. Huh? We have reached this conclusion following an interrogation with a person of interest. According to them, you were responsible for handling the contents of the wine bottle prior to the start of play. 
Well, that is true. It's clear you took the opportunity to pour poison inside it. But that logically just doesn't track, because that, that would have meant that both of them would die. Because it, it's indiscriminate. You just... Bruh, shoddy detective work. I mean, I know that's the point, but shoddy detective work, guys. It was only grape juice. I didn't add any poison. Besides, where would she even get poison from? Ms. Martina, this was discovered in the chemistry lab. It's always the fucking chemistry lab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it appears my deduction was correct. The poison was right under our noses. I mean, that does make sense, though. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of dangerous chemicals in schools. Hmm. It seems to have been a particularly potent one. The label warns that even a small amount ingested can result in death. The bottle is unsealed, and some of the liquid is missing. There's no mistake. You secretly stole this from the chemistry lab and used it for murder, didn't you? I don't know anything about it! That bottle is way too big to be stolen without anyone noticing. What a worthless comment. No, I think that's a pretty worthwhile comment, actually. Like, that is a massive bottle. You'd have to actually go to this chemistry lab. We are right. One could simply unseal it in the chemistry lab and put the substance in a smaller container to take wherever desired. I mean, true, but you still have to go there and do that. Which could then be directly poured into the wine bottle. If you're gonna pick a fight, you better have sound logic backing you up. Uh, we got pretty sound logic. I'm just panicking and I can't say it right now. This is the last time I'll do this for you. Hmm. There's a warning on the bottle. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Well, that's nice to know. Huh? After 30 minutes, it becomes harmless? And the play was like 45 minutes long, right? So someone would have had to leave the lab. Yoshiko looking a little bit sus right now. If you think that's important, go for broke and try pointing it out. Uh, can I just like walk away? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I, I can't. There's like a. Oh no, it was the the, the body. Hey, Kurumi, <laughs> you're right there. Oh, bad situation, right? Don't worry, I'll, I'll get you out of this. It's gonna take a while, probably like three to four episodes, but don't worry, I'll help you out. I promise. And it'll, it'll be nice. I'll probably blush some more. Maybe we'll get a hug. Uh, Desuhiko will be like, that's my guy! <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, dude! And Shinigami will still be jealous, and... Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, it'll be a whole thing. Um, I'm curious about what's written on the bottle's warning label. Yuma, come on, man! Have a, have a little chutzpah! Warning label. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. It has been 30 minutes since the murder occurred. If this chemical was unsealed at the time of the crime, it will have already lost its potency. Let us check. Brave, but I mean, that would have to, I mean, it would have to be the case, right? It's a label. It's in school. It'd kind of have to be. Have to be accurate. Nothing. It seems likely that this poison was used as the murder weapon. Helpful, though. Helpful proving that it was opened at least half an hour ago. Which means the crime was possible only for someone at the school with access to the chemistry lab. However, this fact does not contradict her being the killer. Wait, no! I am well aware that many of Etheria Academy students are children of those affiliated with Amaterasu Corporation. But she isn't. Is that what you're gonna hit me with? However, that cannot be used as an excuse to bend the truth. Criminals must be punished as criminals. Now that is true. That, 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 that's kind of based. However, <laughs> we all know you're abusing your power here. You're doing <laughs> poor detective work. Or that is justice. Now be gone. Any additional interference, and you'll be arrested as well. Take her away, and dispose of the corpse on stage before it rots. Well, that's interesting, because uh, we're inside on this one. 
Also interesting that I, th I assume Martina is going to be the, the peacekeeper we go up against in the mystery labyrinth. Would not have expected her in case two. Corpses she was more like a case so three or four. The rain but... and humidity in this town. Why? There must be a mistake. It wasn't me. That's right. She's not the killer. Please listen to me. I warned you not to interfere any further. She swapped out the contents of the bottle before the play began. You might think you missed out the you claim there. <laughs> the, no, 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 she didn't do that, I think is what you wanted to say. And the incident occurred more than 30 minutes into the play. If the chemical use in the crime becomes harmless after 30 minutes, then it's impossible for her to be the culprit. I see. How logical and beautiful. Thank you. There is beauty in being logical with all things, much like the golden ratio. Oh, that, that is that going to be your gimmick? I, I see. Like gazing upon a flawless art piece, and the more delicate it appears... Lady, please. The more excited I become envisioning the moment I pulverize it! Okay, oh, she's a crazy person. And not in the way I expected her to be. Huh? I expect that they're just being incredibly horny, but well, specifically for Yomi. But no, she's. She, I mean, I, I can see why he would be horny for her. Then, uh, yeah, actually, th this makes sense. This makes sense. I understand now. Logic is meaningless in the face of ultimate power. Unfortunately, yeah, that is actually kind of true. It kind of contradicts what you said about uh, justice earlier, but that's yeah, whatever. It is nothing but a glass ornament beneath an iron hammer. Uh, no. I... I'm so excited! What's with her? Right, look, there's always one of the- Look, it's what I said about Desuhika last time, Yuma. There's always one of these in a Danganronpa. I guess all the Peacekeeper higher-ups are perverts without exception. Now, my soft and fragile-looking student, your play-acting as a detective is over. Wait, do you not know who I am? You gotta know who I am, right? Play acting? If you intend to continue interfering with our justice, then you will be pulverized. Help me, Yuma! You know, I can very much see many other people being okay with that. Hmm? Yuma? I've heard that name somewhere. Oh, you really didn't know who I am. No, never mind. I don't know a little girl like you. I guess I pull off being a little girl pretty good, huh? Thanks, Desuhiko, your disguise was perfect. Play acting as a detective? Oh, that <laughs> really got my soul. She's right. What am I doing? I've mistaken detectives for superheroes. Justice is a matter of opinion. With enough conviction, anything can be considered justice. Yeah, you are actually pretty convincing with that portrait there, Yuma. It's only an assumption, completely worthless and completely powerless. Hey, I told you all students must wait on the lower level. Stop wandering around and go join the others. <sighs> Kurumi was taken away. What should I do? Do I just walk away as if nothing happened? No, of course not, Yuma. Hey, you fucking crazy? No, I can't do that. Kurumi believed in me. She said the detectives are heroes. I'm no hero, but I'm the only one who can save her right now. I have to do something. <laughs> the truth is still hidden. To discover the truth behind this case, and to find out who the real killer is, I need Desuhiko's help. I need his disguise ability to get information from the club members. As a good man, Yuma. You, you faltered for a moment there. You, you really looked like a, a young lady for a minute. But hey, I mean, cover's not blown yet, and you righted your wrongs pretty much instantly. It's a moment of weakness. Oh, you're that cutie who was with Kurumi. Uh, yeah, that's me. What are you doing here? If you don't go underground, they'll be mad at you. 
It, yeah. I was called for questioning, but now I'm heading back. Let's go together. Oh, it's fine. I'll be right there, so go on ahead without me. Oh, he's put, yeah. <laughs> he's even putting on a voice now, I see. Are you sure? Oh, man. I guess that means I have to talk a little more like this then? Yeah, okay. Well, I was curious. Are all the other theater club members also underground? Like Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurone too? Yeah, that's right. Yoshiko is feeling pretty shocked right now. She's in the rest area because she wants to be alone. Waruna is with her usual friend group in the makeup room. Lysithia! This is who this is! Also known as Peko Peko Yama! That's gotta be this voice actress. It's gotta be. As for Kurene, maybe she's in the staff room with the other club members. Ah, got it. Thanks. I'll be going now. Um, teacher? I'm sorry. My student is distressed, so please excuse us for a moment. And is this... Is this Sumugi? <laughs> Dorothy Fan, I believe her name is. You okay, Yuma? I'm fine, but Kurumi got caught by the peacekeepers. Are you serious? What are you gonna do? Tetsuhiko, can you lend me a hand investigating this case? Don't tell me you want to keep investigating behind the peacekeepers' backs. Uh, again? Yeah, I, I do! Reckless. The chief even told me not to, but this is something I have to do. Uh, sorry, I have to get more of the, the feminine voice, but still a little bit strainy. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh. What do you think? Is my acting good? Can I be in this drama club? Yeah, I thought so too, huh? You gotta save the woman you love, right? I totally get it. What a wingman. <laughs> No, it's not like I love... My man. Usually I'd help you out of sheer respect alone. But those bastards questioned me already, so uh, I can't move from this spot. Couldn't you make up an excuse to leave? Aren't you good at that? Yeah, I probably could, but I couldn't stay away for too long. Why? Maybe I could slip out in disguise, but... That would put him on high alert and make the investigation tougher. I mean, if someone did just disappear, that is true. Then what should I do? There's another solution. I'll disguise you, so you can keep on investigating. I mean, true. That could also work. You want me to keep investigating in disguise? Yeah, I'll give you a voice changer too. I'll leave this to you. Oh, look at you, Yuma! Look at y'all! You won't even have to pretend. But if this goes on for much longer, we'll both be in trouble. My disguises can't last forever. What? Really? Yeah, I guess it. Uh, yeah, it would be pretty. Uh, a, a pretty broken power if you could. It puts a huge strain on my body. I oh, did already say that, huh? I'm already starting to feel dizzy. Are, are you okay? Not really. But I gotta do this. It's all to save the love of your life. Well, I mean, thanks. To, I, I, I respect it, Desuhiko. I respect your passion. Um, you're, you're a bit more of a bro than I thought you'd be. I mean, this saying I love her is a bit extreme, but... Besides, I'm a master detective of the WDO. I've seen plenty of dangerous situations. I mean, I'm certainly curious as to what you have seen, Desuhiko. So, who do you want to disguise as? Tell me. Oh, interesting. Go around. Hmm. Well, Yoshiko, Yoshiko is probably the best one, right? Waruna doesn't actually talk to people that much, and I don't think Kurane does either. I think Yoshiko is probably the one to go for. I want to disguise as Yoshiko. So, you want to be the star candidate of the theater club. She's known for being an honor student, right? So, you know all about her. Why do you think I wanted her on the school? Once I've seen the face, I never forget it. Just leave it to me. I'll pretend that it was pure and wholesome, Desuhiko. Pardon me. She said she's not feeling well. May I accompany her to the restroom? I'm sorry. We'll be back right away. 
Use those feminine wiles, Desuhiko. <laughs> yeah, get, get us into that toilet so we can change in your giant bag. I, I, I guess we won't need to hold his hand for this one then, though. He, he can just do All it. Alright, that was perfect. I slipped a voice changer under your clothes, so be sure to use it. I, is that why my... Sh Shirt is like weirdly hiked up at the moment. Oh, also, just a heads up, uh, touching your own boobs won't feel good or anything. Okay, look, I know. I know this is definitely you, just, you know, man to man. Tell me what I need to hear. I know you've tried this before, Desuhiko. And that's, that's okay. It's not actually, that's really weird, it's really creepy, but. This is serious business, man. I, I don't have time to be feeling around, okay? I'm not gonna touch them! We'll see about that, perverted detective. Honestly, if anyone were gonna touch them, I'd assume it would be you, Shinigami. Uh, to keep it a buck. I'm heading back now. I can't believe I've said that twice this episode. Yoshiko is supposedly well respected by everyone. I hope I can extract information from different theater members. I know, it's because she's got like a belt on or something. But I'd better be careful and avoid the real Yoshiko. I think Yoshiko is in the rest area, and Waruna's the makeup room. Kurune should be in the staff room. Convenient that they're all in different locations. Okay, so just don't go to the rest area, basically. A perverted cross-dressing detective appears. Uh, well, I guess it's the just theater here. hall is currently closed off by Vice Director Martina of the Peacekeepers. It's not through All here. All students who are at the scene are to remain in the lower level. You are to stay there as well. Okay, but how do I get there? I guess this way. Uh, Looks like there are stairs here. Roaming around. Yeah, yeah. If you're not gonna help Shinigami, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay. Also convenient that these rooms are all directly opposite each other. Wait, should I be looking around for, for blue oh. balls? Oh yeah, she is literally right there. Uh, I should probably stay away. I, did, I didn't notice her there. Damn, my curiosity for blue balls nearly got me in big, big trouble. You're so oblivious, Master. And a creeper, too. What do you mean, oblivious? What does that mean in this circumstance? Yoshiko! Why'd you leave me back there? I was so scared. Those peacekeepers kept harassing me. They're the worst. Um, you're... I watched from above the whole time. I saw Cotton die. Going to have nightmares about this. Yeah, you probably will, actually. You are probably traumatized for life. I'm so scared. Can we walk home together today? Please. Or you are... Hey, you know what? I wasn't going to say anything about this reminding me of Persona, just walking through these weirdly tight corridors with two random students standing aside with speech bubbles. But there is always one NPC in a Persona game. It's always a lady. She's always thirsting after someone who's usually, like, an honest student, council president type. I see you're that girl. <laughs> hey, if you were watching from above, does that mean you were with Kurene on the lights? This, I, I, I must have been an NPC last time. Yoshiko is the Charlotte Sakura Fire Emblem voice actress. I was. Why are you asking me this now? Then tell me, did Kurne do anything strange during the performance? Did she carry anything suspicious or do anything out of the ordinary? No. She was the same old unfriendly Kurne. She came to the catwalk before the performance and was there the whole time until the incident occurred. <laughs> if she did anything out of the ordinary, I would have immediately noticed. Lighting requires perfect teamwork. Which is basically what we heard from Kurumi as well. To be honest, it feels really suffocating to be around her. Oh, I wish you were on the lights instead, Yoshiko. 
Anyway, why do you ask? Oh, uh, no reason. So, Karine was just her usual self, huh? Yep. I never lie to you. Remember the Duel of Poisoned Cups part? Where they shuffled the cups? So, uh, Shinigami, I noticed you didn't say anything about this girl grabbing me. You, uh, is your abuse targeted, or...? Could you see that part from above? Hmm? Yes, of course. Although the audience couldn't, I could see their hands moving from above. As part of the lighting crew, that was my most important scene, so it would have been a problem if I couldn't. Most important? Yoshiko! You complimented me during the meeting about this, remember? It's the scene where we shine the spotlight on the glasses after shuffling. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> that, uh, how is it supposed to go again? Yuma, I, I don't really think you're playing this character perfectly. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's the presentation where we use two spotlights. As I will say, it has not escaped my notice the thematic relevance between the fact that this is a theater club and disguise is the ability we're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might as well bring it up. Kurine puts a spotlight on one of the glasses first, then I immediately put another spotlight down. Were you not watching? Uh, I was. I just remembered. You did an excellent job with the lights. Wow! <laughs> I'm so excited. I doubt I'll sleep at all tonight. May we finally have that sleepover? Oh, now Shinigami's reacting. There's something I need to do right now. Maybe another time. Yo, it kind of looked like she was going to come in for a kiss there. Oh, man. Well, someone's popular, I guess. It's a club locker. Yoshiko's name tag is on it. I should open it and search inside. You're opening a young girl's locker? What you're doing is totally psycho. Look, there could be important stuff in there, okay? It's for the investigation. Give me a break. Happy birthday. Yeah, what the Violence of feelings? I hope it doesn't turn into a hobby. It won't. I, I am not a degen. The script and makeup items are neatly placed. Huh? There's a glass in the back. It's the same kind that was used for the play. Oh. What is this doing here? So I'm trying to read the... The violence of feelings destroys. What else is there? Oh, there's a photo on the back of the door. It's a two-shot photo of Yoshiko and... Another girl wearing this school's uniform. Oh, that's Aiko. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't say it at the time. Uh, she looks very much like Komaru <laughs> from Dangan. Um, and this girl, also Aiko, that is, the, the one who died in the, the little opening movie. And she looks very much like Komaru. Who is she? Which does give Yoshiko a bit of a motive as well, huh? And that's about it for the things of note in this locker. I don't know, I feel like it's a little too easy to, to get to that. But then again, I mean, same thing with the priest last time, right? That would have been way too easy in theory. Do you have but... a moment? I want to talk about what happened. Wait, yeah, way too easy in theory. But um, it did end up being that easy. The, the real mystery there was how it all went down, not who did it. Um, which could be... That, that could just be the running theme for this one, right? That, that, that is a bit of an ace attorney thing as well, right? Whether the... <laughs> The killer is usually pretty obvious if they don't just outright show you who it is. It's more about figuring out how it was done. So maybe th this game might take that route. But then again, I mean, with Zilch, right? That was pretty... Like, I, I didn't see that one really coming uh, out of the gate, so... Mm -hmm. Um, Yoshiko? Hmm? What's wrong? Uh, I'm sorry. It's nothing. Excuse me. She suddenly fell quiet. I guess I shouldn't question her anymore. Mm. She looked like she wanted to say something, but maybe it's something she can't say to Yoshiko. 
Maybe she'll talk if I'm disguised as someone else. So Warrener, considering that uh, Corone is sitting right over there. don't want Yoshiko to hear? Okay, I see how it's gonna be. Okay, Karin, I assume this is Warrener. Yeah. Curious that uh, <laughs> they're the ones with uh, customized lockers and no one else has anything. So Kurone, wait, hang on. Who's this one? This was Karin's, right? I don't think we're gonna get away with opening this, but we might as well try. It's a club locker. Karin's name tag is on it. Um, that isn't your locker, Yoshiko. Yeah, we know. Oh, oh, you're right. Did you forget? We talked about this during the last meeting. Yeah, well, I guess I am actually this kind of stupid. Using someone else's makeup will lead to fights, so we aren't allowed to open other people's lockers. The situation is bad enough already, so please don't do anything that could start more fights. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's no way we get in there. Okay, Kurone, you willing to talk? You managed it well. Huh? What do you mean? You're getting good at playing dumb, too. <laughs> are you practicing for the peacekeepers? You really are the top actress after all. Are you talking about what just happened? You really want to say that so loudly. Okay, well, I know where her suspicions lie. <laughs> Don't worry. I know how to keep a secret. She seems to believe Yoshiko is the culprit from the way she's talking. Uh, are we going to have like a culprit blame triangle here? One of them thinks it's the other, one of them thinks it's the other, and the other one thinks it's the final person. Is there something about Yoshiko that makes her think that? Maybe, but uh, we're not going to get it out of her. Okay, hmm, looking at the time. Let's let's finish the Yoshiko investigation and I think then we'll uh, we'll end the episode. I think that's how this will go. Hello. <laughs> oh. Scene already. Can we have some time alone for a bit? Um, oh, I thought you were kicking me out. About what happened? How could you show your face here after murdering Cotton? Oh no, <laughs> they both think Yoshiko did it. Okay, she probably didn't then. Huh? You're not supposed to be here. Listen, the peacekeepers are everywhere. So stay away from me, got it? Murderers should just... Wait, who are you calling a murderer? Enough! I have nothing to say to you! Shut up and get out of here! Mm. That was intense. No, I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, mm. uh, I don't know. Part of me's just not buying that, though. But, 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 but it kind of just seems too easy in that sense, right? That it's like, oh, they both think Yoshiko did it. So Yoshiko won't have done it, and it's one of those two. No, I, I feel like we're gonna can we're, we're gonna get that vibe from everyone, right? But like, I don't know. I think it's kind of gonna go down that to a certain extent they like everyone kind of already knows what happened to Aiko, and like tensions were just high, and it was you know the vibe was just it was a matter of time before someone else died. I think, I, I'm kind of getting the vibe that that's where we're going to go with this. I heard they were on bad terms, but maybe she's more on edge because of what happened? On top of that, Warren thinks Yoshiko is the killer. Maybe there's a reason why she thinks that. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be to, I mean, <sighs> considering the whole photo, I find it hard to believe that Yoshiko would have purposely killed Aiko. But then again, it was a big part of a, or a, a small part of a bigger picture. Maybe they were all friends. And like, you know, ah, uh, they all kind of split up because of the, the, the murder. 
And it was like, I don't know, a, a bit of an infight. And again, like that, that would lead to everyone kind of being in on it. Yeah. All right, ladies. You got any info for me? What should I do? I'm gonna get yelled at. What's wrong? Oh, Yoshiko, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Now, this school is full of voice actresses that I know. <laughs> is there a problem? Yes. Well, we're missing a prop glass. Okay. Presumably that's the one that was in Yoshiko's locker. A glass? You mean for the stage? Yes. You're the one who prepared it for our play today. Oh, um... Did I do that? Huh? Did you forget? We originally planned to use wine glasses, but their thin stems break so easily. So last time you bought four others, including the backups. Uh, oh, right. Two backups were on the prop shelf, but there's only one of them now. Oh, where could it have gone? Okay. So, we, I mean, we know where that is. But considering that we just opened the locker anyway, could be planted. But, nah. There we go. Well, I'm glad we've already connected the dots Speaking there. Of, I want to ask if you're the one who set the glasses up on the stage. That's a little bit of uh, Edgeworth Investigations logic right there. <laughs> yes, I was. Did you notice anything strange with the glasses at the time? No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. I see. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, you were in charge of... the costumes? You're acting like this is the first time we've met. Do you not remember me? Well, people call me the ghost member all the time. I'm here every day, but no one notices me. Well, at least I'm not as bad as Kurene. Lady, you're just making me feel a bit bad for you. <laughs> but she stands out a lot when she's on stage. Could it be she acts a certain way so she doesn't stand out on purpose? What do you think, Yoshiko? Uh, uh, I'm not so sure. <sighs> she's quiet. Maybe she's not on good terms with Yoshiko. Yeah, I was gonna say, I assume each of these rooms, right, is gonna have... Out, I'm not telling you. You're not gonna figure anything out. Let's not pretend. A gun? Yes, a real gun, Yuma. Oh, it's just a water gun. There's a hole on top for adding water. Okay. There is no fucking shot. We're gonna go with su- I don't know, Kurane for the point, you know, since we know she was up there. Stood over the fucking walkway. And water gunned poison into one of the cups. There's no shot that's what we're gonna do. That's the prop we used in our previous performance. You did a wonderful job. Thanks. There's no shot. There's no shot. That's what we're doing. That should be enough. Maybe that's all the investigating I can do. Okay, well, we'll, we'll swap over to a new disguise. Then we'll end the episode. Oh. <sighs> I think that's about all the information I can gather while disguised as Yoshiko. People treat Yoshiko exactly like it was reputed. Everyone around her seems to trust her. <laughs> Did we play the same investigation sequence, Yuma? That being said, Waruna and Kurune seem to think Yoshiko is the culprit. Do they think she poisoned a rival to eliminate the competition? No, I don't think that's going to be the motive. If I don't see if her she as did. someone who could kill. There was no info tying her to the murder either. Yeah. I think I Directly. need to disguise myself as another club member and gather more information. Because, like, what's up with the glasses thing? Presumably, taking one of the glasses would mean you would have to use the other two. But that wouldn't make sense either, because there's another glass left over. So what's the point in taking one? Getting a 
addicted to drag, are you? I don't think you're about to win any races. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, actually, this isn't... Well, I, th this could be considered drag. There, there's a lot of different forms. <laughs> but usually, I, you know... My old costume would have been more drag. Th this is, um... This is impersonation. This is a crime. Uh, um... Teacher? Oh, what's wrong? You look pale. I'm sorry, but my student appears to be feeling rather anxious. How's the investigation going? Who do you want to disguise as next? Well, whoever's next on the list, I suppose, if we're going to be going through everyone. I want to disguise as Waruna. Waruna, the other lead actress on stage. No, I kind of dig chicks who seem hard to get. <laughs> All right, Desuhiko. All righty, time to turn you into just the kind of girl I like. You know, I was thinking about this before the start of the episode, but, um... Remember in that gab when I said, what about me? <laughs> so creepy. Perverts of a feather flock together. Warren a secret. Oh, there she was to give milk to stray cats and have an activity she hasn't told anyone about. Well, thanks, loading screen, for telling me all about it. What a sweetheart she is underneath that cold exterior. Well, more like bitchy exterior. Right, but... that's perfect. In fact, I'd totally bang you right now. If you're okay with that. Okay, Desu, okay, Desuhiko, my man. It was like normal. Okay, not normal, but it was acceptable until you said that. Hey, hold on. That's completely out of line. I'm a superstar detective. Social norms don't apply to me. I refuse to hold myself back. Okay, my man. Look, it... Hold your horses. Uh, we can save the fun for later. Go investigate. Told you, though. What about me? <laughs> Warna is supposed to be feared by the other members. I hope I can still get some information from them. Yeah, it sure would suck if we just heard that and I couldn't get anything out of this. But I better make sure I don't run into the real Waruna. Uh, Yoshiko was in the rest area, Waruna the makeup room, and Kurane the staff room, right? Well, well, we will get back into the action in the next episode. God damn it, Desuhiko. You were fine until you said that, you creepy little weirdo. <laughs> Just... Uh, you also got an Ahoge erection, which isn't... Uh, that's even worse. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one where I figure we'll probably wrap up the investigation and um, get on our way to helping out Kurumi. But until then, yeah, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.